cruise liner that spent two weeks at sea and was turned away from five countries for fear of coronavirus, despite not having any confirmed cases aboard, has finally found a place to dock in Cambodia. A huge relief for the passengers aboard the MS Westerdam. It's nearly 1,500 tourists and 800 crew aboard arrived at an anchoring point on Thursday morning. I think the story for us starts back in the late afternoon of the 12th of February 2020. Angkor Tiké received an urgent request from our partner in Vietnam, Mr Thorn, that the Westerdam cruise ship would like to dock at Sihanoukville port in Cambodia as soon as possible. They were getting really desperate as due to the new fear of the COVID-19 outbreak, they had already been denied docking by five countries in Asia, even though all the passengers had tested negative. It was such short notice for us, but we could never say no. Some of our team stayed to complete all the documentation that needed to be submitted to the Ministry of Public Works and Transportation and other relevant ministries to get the formal permission. And others got ready to travel that night from our head office in Simreap to Sihanoukville. As soon as we had been given the necessary approval from the government, they left immediately. We were all on standby at the office until late into the evening. The Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen himself gave permission for the Westerdam to dock at Sihanoukville so that all the 2,257 people on board, that's including the crew, could disembark and fly back to their countries from Phnom Penh International Airport. As they had been at sea for nearly two weeks, you can imagine how relieved they were to hear this news. Our work had just begun. As I mentioned, two of our team members had left Siem Reap for Sihanoukville with two drivers at midnight, and they drove through the night to get there in time to coordinate getting the passengers and crew safely off the boat. On the 13th of February, other members of our team left Siem Reap for Phnom Penh to organize getting the passengers to the airport on time to catch their flights back to their home countries. Angkor DK has a lot of experience working with cruise ships and coordinating huge numbers of passengers in one day. However, we usually had months and months of time to plan and everything was pre-booked and pre-arranged. This was so different as we had to cooperate with so many different people. The passengers, the Holland America team, the Cambodian government, our Vietnamese partners, the hotel staff, the embassy staff and the drivers just to make sure that every single person got where they needed to go. These really were unprecedented times. At that moment, we knew very little about COVID-19 and there was fear and panic to deal with on top of the sheer logistics of that many people and flights. The ship docked in the afternoon on the 13th of February, but no passengers were allowed to disembark just yet. We were extremely busy trying to get everything prepared there was so much to do and so little time to do it. We did our very best, but it was not the calm, smooth operation we were used to running. Our first huge hurdle came when the bus drivers we had hired to bring the passengers from the ship to Phnom Penh on the 14th of February came back to our team and said they would not do it as they were too scared of the virus. This was very difficult for us. We could understand their fear, but we had a responsibility to get all these people home. We had to reassure them that all the passengers had been tested and that as this had garnered the attention of the international press, they were also representing their country. We paid them extra and finally they agreed to work for us. At 9 a.m. on the 14th of February, Prime Minister Hun Sen went to give these passengers a warm welcome as they were finally able to leave the ship. After weeks of uncertainty and panic, they were all so happy to be on land once again. Some of the passengers cried happy tears. None of the welcoming committee nor the passengers wore masks. This might seem crazy to us now, knowing what we know about how COVID spreads, 
but at this time there really wasn't that much information about it all and everyone was certain no one aboard had it. Our team working down in Sihanoukville were under so much pressure from the governors and the press as everyone wanted to know what the plans were. Just countless phone calls were made as they were trying to sort everything out. Our team in Phnom Penh were ready and waiting. We had the details of all the passengers and we were just praying that everything went according to the plan. The anticipation and tension waiting for those first passengers to arrive was palpable. But pretty much straight away, we ran into a problem as the number of passengers arriving from Sihanoukville was more than we expected, more than we had details for. Holland America were responsible for booking the passengers' flights back to their countries. So all we had was what was given to us. And then when we had people arriving that were not on our paperwork, it was so confusing. Our role was to get them checked into a comfortable room at the Sokha Phnom Penh Hotel and transport them to the airport. We really felt the pressure as this had made international news and at the same time there was another cruise ship in Japan, the Diamond Princess, that had a severe COVID-19 outbreak on board. Some of the passengers were happy to stay overnight and wait, but others were not. They were scared and far away from home and just wanted to get back to see their families as soon as possible. On the 15th of February, we received information that one of the passengers traveling from Phnom Penh to their country via Malaysia had tested positive. Some passengers had even been able to board the plane, but on hearing the news, the airline representatives changed their minds and removed them from the flight. To say emotions were running high would be an understatement. By the end of the day, we had managed to bring them all back to the hotel so they could rest before the new flights were booked for them. At the same time all this was going on, other passengers decided to take matters into their own hands and were booking flights out for themselves. This single positive result caused a huge problem for us. Many airlines banned the passengers from the Westerdam. The happy tears from the day before changed to panicked ones. Our team too were scared of the virus, but we knew the world was watching and that we were representing our country, so we could not stop. Our team both in Phnom Penh and Sihanoukville had great support from our boss and our partner in Vietnam, who were able to advise us, encourage us and keep us going. We did not give up. The same thing happened the next day. Things were getting tough. More Holland America representatives arrived in Cambodia to work with us to get everyone home. Staff from various embassies also came to the hotel, needing to find out how many people from their country were staying at the hotel and how many had already left. The governors wanted to know the same, and honestly the answer at that point was that we were not sure. Many people were still staying at the hotel, but others had left without telling us. Everything was out of control. People were terrified and panicking and only wanted to get back to their country. By the 18th of February, the passengers had calmed down a bit. The president of Holland America flew in and made a reassuring speech to them all. We were managing to send some of the passengers back home every day. But as most of the airlines had banned the passengers from the Westerdam, Holland America had no choice but to book charter flights to get them home. We formed a close bond with the Holland America team during that time and their presence, particularly that of their president, made a big difference. It showed the passengers just how seriously the company was taking this and how dedicated they were to getting everyone home as quickly as possible. On the 19th of February, our boss, Mr. Tom, flew back from Australia and immediately came to see us. He gave us more support and cheered us up. He was very proud of everything we had done. After 10 long days with little sleep, everyone was totally exhausted. One of our team actually completely lost her voice, but we had done it. 
we had sent all the passengers and crew back home. Our mission finished on the 23rd of February 2020 and now we were able to go home. It was an unforgettable experience and our hard work was recognised by both the Cambodian Ministry of Tourism and Holland America. We were so proud of what we were able to accomplish together and of each and every member of our team who made it possible.